morning guys um okay i'm going to start with the homework from wednesday which was the higher level word problems and um, most of you seem to get on okay with these which is great and um, a rectangular garden has dimensions x plus 5 so you can see that going horizontally across the picture and 16 minus 2x and you can see that there as well it is surrounded by a path of constant width x meters the area of the path is 67.5 meters squared find the area of the garden okay so the garden is in the shape of a rectangle which means the area is going to be length by width the length is x plus 5 and the width is 16 minus 2x okay so we have to multiply out these brackets which means taking the x over to one side Um, doing this color, sorry. Take the plus five over here and then put the 16 minus 2x in between both. Yeah, so that gives us an area of, so let's start with the yellow one. So I'm going to multiply the x by both of those. So it's 16x minus 2x squared. And then I'm going to multiply the 5 by both of those, which is 80, yeah? 80 minus 10x. Okay. So I'm going to put the x squared first. So minus 2x squared. Next, I want to put my x's, um, but I have two of them. So 16 minus 10 is 6. And then last, I'll put in the 80. Okay, so I think that's the area of the garden. Hopefully, and we won't know till we do a bit more. Find the area of the path. Now, we're going to need to split this up. Um, okay, I suppose it doesn't really matter. So if I go across here, so make that one part. Of the path yeah and then the bit at the bottom if you go across here should be the same so if I can figure out what this one is up here I'll just need to double it and then we can do the same thing down the side so if I can figure out what that one is there then I just double it and I'll have this one over here yeah, I think. Okay, so we'll do the red one first. Uh, I'm just going to take off that. Okay, so this way, it's x. And then this way, long ways, it's going to be x plus 5 which is this bit, yeah? And then you're gonna to have to add on an X for here and add on an X for here, yeah? So plus X plus X. So that's three X plus five. Okay, and then I need to double that. So that's six X plus 10. So that's what I think the red bits are. Okay, the yellow bits. So, um, I don't know, just put it down here, is that all right? So across there, it's gonna be X. And then this way, it's gonna be 16 minus 
oh I just realized I made a mistake on that first one hang on sorry anyway so that's 16 minus 2x I am just going to remove this for a moment because that's not right sorry the 3x plus 5 is okay so now I think I have all my dimensions right so for the let's just stick with what I've got red bits yeah the area is going to be length by width the length is 3x plus 5 and the width is x so I'm going to take the x and multiply it into the bracket so I get 3x squared plus 5x yeah and now I can double it So 2 times 3x squared plus 5x is 6x squared plus 10x. Okay. And then the yellow bits. Okay, so we're still talking about length by width. The, it doesn't really matter. The length, let's say, is x and the width is 16 minus 2x. So I have 16x minus 2x squared, but again I have two of them, so I'll need to double. So it's 2 times 16x minus 2x squared, which is 32x minus 4x squared. And then I'm going to need to add them together. So 6x squared plus 10x plus 32x minus 4x squared. So same as I did for the uh, garden. Oh, I wonder could I have done that easier. They told me the area of the path, didn't they? Oh no, no. Yeah, don't think I could have done it easier. Okay, so... Oh no, look, I take that off. We have families, this and this. So that makes 2x squared. And then this and this is 42x. Well, that wasn't easy. Okay. So the garden was okay, the garden was just the two dimensions multiplied together, that was okay. To get the path, it was tricky because you needed to split it up. Now, the way I split it up isn't the only way to split it up, but it's a way to split it up. So I have the top and the bottom, which are my red bits, and the sides, which I'm calling my yellow bits. So the red bit at the top, if we look across, it's the x plus 5, that's the garden, but then there's an x on the right and an x on the left. So that makes 3x plus 5 going across. And then going down, it's x in width. So I multiplied them together here. The 3x plus 5 and the x. I got 3x squared plus 5x. But I have a red bit on the top and a red bit on the bottom. So I doubled. Okay. The yellow bits then. Uh... I suppose looking down, as in how tall the yellow bits are, they're the same height as the garden, so they're 16 minus 2x. And then crossways, they're x in width. So I multiplied x by 16 minus 2x over here. I got 16x minus 2x squared, but again, there's one on the right and one on the left, so I doubled it. 32x minus 4x squared. Then I had to add them all together because the path was the two red bits and the two yellow bits. So I added the red bits, 6x squared plus 10x, and the yellow bits, 32x minus 4x squared. And the two x squareds combined give you 2x, sorry, the 6x squared and the minus 4x squared combined give you 2x squared. And then the 10x and the 32x combined give you 42x. And I think that's the area of the path. Okay, so we'll keep going. This is definitely harder than the ones we did in the example. So find the value of x. Um, the only 
answer or number I've really been given of any significance is here. The area of the path is 67.5. So I have just got an expression for the area of the path down the bottom. And we know the area of the path is 67.5. So if I let them equal each other, I should be able to figure out what x is. So 2x squared plus 42x equals uh, 67.5. Um, okay, so it's a trinomial, except we're supposed to have equals zero, and we don't, so we deal with that by minusing the 67.5 from that side, and minusing the 67.5 from the other side. On the left now, we have an x squared, an x, and a number, so none of them can be added together, so we just list them out, 2x squared plus 42x minus 67.5 and now I have my equals zero. I wouldn't leave a fraction in it or a decimal so it's a 0.5 which is a half so if I multiply everything by two I should be able to eliminate that half okay so multiplying 2x squared by 2 I get 4x squared. 42 by 2 I get 84x and 67.5 by 2 is minus 135. Oh, these are big numbers. So 135 by 4. So that's going to be a guide number when you combine the 4 with the minus 135. It's minus 540. Okay. Again, you can go with minus b here because these are big numbers. I'm looking for 84. So anyway, let's get started. 1 by 540. 2 by 270. 3 by 180. 4 135. 5 by 108, 6 by 90, that's it, so 6 by 90, I can get 84 with those numbers, um, it's a plus 84, so this will be a minus and this will be a plus, to get a plus 84, uh, write it out, so 4x squared minus 6x plus 90x minus 135, equals zero. Um, pair them up. So we put the four and the six together and the 90 and the 135. Um, common factor here is going to be 2x. So I'm going to divide this by 2x and this by 2x. Four divided by two is two and then the x on the bottom will cancel one of the x's on the top leaving me with x. Minus six divided by two is three and both of those x's will cancel. Um, the common factor here I think is 45 so I'm going to divide this by 45 and this one by 45 so 90 divided by 45 is 2 and then we have the x and minus 135 divided by 45 is 3 so if these match which they do I have it right so it's 2x minus 3 and 2x plus 45. Okay, so we'll split the page. Okay, so I let the 2x minus 3 equal 0 and the 2x plus 45 equal 0. Um, on the left, I'm going to plus the 3 and plus the 3. So I get 2x equals 3, and then I'm going to divide by 2 and divide by 2. So x is 3 over 2, or 1.5. On the other side, I'm going to minus the 45 and minus the 45. So on the left, it will cancel. 
I get 2x equals minus 45, and then I'm going to divide by that 2. So x is uh, minus 22.5. Sorry, there's some answers. Whew. Okay. So find the value of x. So I'm actually getting two values, um, but remembering that this is about like the width of a path and stuff. Um, it obviously can't be minus. So we'll reject the minus answer there and we'll assume that the path is 1.5 meters in width. Oh, sorry, not the path. It's, well, yeah, the path, sorry, is 1.5 meters in width. Yeah, so then obviously that X is 1.5 all the way through. So the garden was, what was the garden? I've kind of written over it. Um, x plus 5 and 16 minus 2x. Okay, so x plus 5 one way and 16 minus 2x the other way. x is 1.5, so 1.5 plus 5 means it's 6.5 meters one way. And 16 minus 2 times 1.5, uh, 2 times 1.5 is, so that's 16 minus 3, which is 13 meters. So in one direction, it's 6.5 meters, and in the other direction, it is 13 meters. Oh, that wasn't easy. You're going to tell me now there's a much easier way to do it. You guys always manage to do that. Um, yeah, okay. Anyway, sorry, for part D, it says find the area of the garden. So I have the length and the width. So to get the area, we just do length by width which is 6.5 multiplied by 13. Oh, ah, 6.5 multiplied by 13 is 84.5 meters squared is the area of the garden. Okay, I would be interested to see how you get on with that one. Okay, the second one then, God, we're still going. Um, the height h in meters of a ball thrown vertically upwards from the balcony of an apartment complex is given by that formula, where t is the time in seconds. So this is very similar to the example, or at least it looks it. From what height is the ball thrown? Okay, so from what height is the ball thrown? That is the moment that the timer starts. So that's when t equals zero. So we take our formula. And we let t equal zero. So it becomes minus five bracket zero squared plus 18 bracket zero plus eight. Okay, the first one, zero squared is zero. Zero multiplied by minus five is zero. Then plus 18 times zero is zero and then you have your eight. So the height, was it meters? Yep. So that's eight meters is the height it was thrown from. What is the average speed of the ball in the first second of flight? Wow. Gotta really pick these. Um, okay, well it's the first second. So if we figure out what height it oh sorry, what height it is when t is one, would that be a good place to start? Do you know what I'm actually gonna go underneath because I'm just after using up all the space. Okay, so let's go. The height is minus five t squared plus eighteen t plus eight, and we're gonna put one in and see what we get for the height. Yeah. Um, when you're doing this, 
there, just to be aware that you do the square first. So one squared is one, and then multiply that by minus five is minus five, plus 18 plus eight. So 18 plus eight minus five is 21 meters. Okay, so at one, so during the first second, it went from eight meters to 21 meters, okay? So we know speed equals distance over time. So what distance did it cover in that second? Eight to 21, what is that? 13? So it covered 13 meters of distance in one second. So that is 13 meters per second. Yeah? What is the average speed of the ball in the first second of flight? Like that is the first second because at zero, it was when you started the timer. So the first second is going from zero to one. During that second, it covered 13 meters of distance. And it obviously did that in a second. So 13 meters per second makes sense. Okay, we'll keep going. Um, how long did it take for the ball to hit the ground? So we did this one the other day. The ball to hit the ground is when the height is zero. So this is where you take your formula once again, but you make the height zero. Okay, we'll move everything like we did with the one. So the plus five T squared to cancel and then plus five T squared over on this side. And then we will minus the 18 T to cancel it and put it over here. And then we will minus the eight and put it over here. So I have five T squared minus 18 T minus eight equals zero. Okay, we'll go as quickly as possible through this guide number. Um, so the guide is those two, which is minus 40. And I'm looking for 18, and then ultimately minus 18. So uh, one by 40, two by 23 doesn't go, four by 10. Five eighths won't do it. Um, does this not work? Or have I missed something? Maybe. Five eighteen eight. Hmm. Oh, I've missed something. Two and 20 will work. So if I need minus 18, we do plus and minus. So that is 5t squared plus 2t minus 20t minus 8. Bracket them off. Um, first one is just going to be t. So we'll divide by t. This t will cancel one of these. So 5t plus 2 because both of those t's will cancel. Minus uh, 4. So minus 4 and minus 4. The two minuses are a plus 
20 divided by 4 is 5 and then you have the t and the two minuses are plus and 8 divided by 4 is 2. Are they the same? Yes, they are. So 5t plus 2 and t minus 4. Which split in. Uh, 5t plus 2 equals 0 and t minus 4 equals 0. Uh, minus the 2 on both sides. 5t equals minus 2. And then divided by 5 again on both sides. T is that point 4. Minus 0 0.4. And on the other side, a bit easier, we just add the 4 and add the 4. So T is 4. Okay, so these represent seconds. So again, I am assuming this one gets rejected because we can't have a negative time. So the question was, how long will it take for the ball to hit the ground? It should take the ball four seconds to hit the ground. So um, A and C there are, we did those, they're very normal. Middle one's a bit weird. Um, average speed questions like this, we do at leaving cert, but we use a completely different method to do it. Um, so I'm not sure that I've come across it much at junior cert. Um, I mean, the, the logical thing is to use speed equals distance over time, which is what we did. Um, so yeah, that one's a bit weird and I don't know that I remember seeing it on papers before now. So I wouldn't be massively worried about B, but A and C are quite typical and they're very similar to the example. Okay, so that took ages. Um, I'm just gonna, and get down under all of this. So this is Friday the 5th. Oh, can't spell. Right, so we're moving on to the next chapter. It is the mother of all chapters. This chapter is 50 pages long in your book. It took me forever to put this one note together. I would strongly suggest that when you are doing your notes on this chapter that you do them once and you do them right. This is not something you want to be repeating. Um, synthetic geometry, which is what we're doing here, is probably the most theory heavy section in maths. Okay, there's a lot of terms that you need to learn. Um, there's definitions, there's theorems, there's axioms, there's corollaries. And all of these things just, um, they don't necessarily need to be learned off, but they need to be information that you can rely on. So you need to kind of bank them so that you have this information. Like an example of a theorem that you would require to be able to do a question would be Pythagoras' theorem. So do you know that if you have a right angle triangle, the square and the hypotenuse is equal to the other two sides squared and added together? Okay, you don't necessarily need to be able to quote the theorem, but you need to know that fact is true. Another one, which you should already know, is that the three angles in a triangle always add up to 180 degrees. That's another piece of information that you're supposed to know. And there's like 28 of those pieces of information that you need to know. So um, that's why the chapter is so long, because there's just so much in it. And um, so like I said, I would suggest that you do your best at clipping these notes as much as possible. Keep them as short as possible, as concise as possible, because there's a lot of them, okay? So the first part of this chapter is just going back through the bits of the ordinary level chapter that you would have done at the end of first year, or you should have done at the end of first year. And um, so a couple of things, um, I'll fly through these, right? A plane, so a plane is a two-dimensional surface. It has length and width, but no thickness. So when we talk about a plane, what we are talking about is our X and Y axis, okay? So you put a point on a plane, and that refers to a position, okay? So we have here that a point refers to a position in the plane, and we always do that by giving you the X-coordinate first and then the Y-coordinate, and that directs you to a point on that plane, 
okay? And then if you draw a couple of points on the plane, you can join them and create lines or triangles or squares, but they will always be two-dimensional, okay? Whatever you draw on a plane will always be two-dimensional. Yeah? Um, so lines, uh, there's different, well, a line is a line, I suppose, but there are different types of lines. Do they go into these? Yeah, they do a bit further down. Um, so a line is straight and it will be infinitely long in both directions. Okay, so while we might draw a line like... Let's try and make it straight. <laughs> yeah, whatever. All right, there's a random line drawn because my board hopped. So there's a line which I have clearly started and ended. There was a start point and there was an end point, okay? Because that's what I drew. That line would continue. It would continue off in this direction and it would also continue off in that direction, okay? It is infinitely long. Um, another word is if I put a couple of points on that line, so there's another point and there's another point and there's another point. If I threw a load of points on that line, those points are referred to as being co-linear. Okay, so you cohabit, like if you live together with other people, you cohabit, you live together. Co-linear means on the same line. Okay, next thing here is a perpendicular line. So I, I'm just going to this because I'm assuming we know what a perpendicular line is. So perpendicular lines um, are 90 degrees to each other. And then the next one there is parallel lines, which are equal distance apart and will never touch. They never meet. Okay. Um, a line segment. So the line I drew up there that had a start and an end, a line segment is a part of a line. So if you draw a particular part of a line and you are highlighting its starting point and its ending point, then it's referred to as a line segment. It is a segment of that line, okay? Array, which is next there. Array has a starting point, but no ending point. Okay, so you can see here, it starts at A, but it doesn't end at B. It goes straight through. And it could also work the other way. It could start at B and burst straight through A. Yeah? So, um, you have a line segment and then a ray. And then a line is one that continues infinitely in both directions. Okay? So again, you do not need to be writing all of this down. Like I would have ray and I'd have my picture. Starting point, no ending point. Line segment has start and end point. Like that's the kind of thing you're looking for. Line segment has start and end point. However many words that is. Keep it really short. You just need to be able to recognize what is a line segment. Okay. Um, right, angles. So there are different ways to label angles. You can do it with the three letter notation, which is what's here. Okay, and that's where you put the, the one you're looking for. So like say I make this triangle and it's or S T. Sorry, ORST, and it's this angle here that I want to label. So I use this symbol, because that's the symbol for angle, and then I make sure the S goes in the middle. So it's either ORST or I could do TSOR. Okay, if I want the angle S, I have to put S in the middle. Is that okay? Um, alternately, if the question, if the question actually puts an, an angle in there like here, then you can just call it angle B. So use the angle symbol and the letter. If they put a number in there, you just call it angle one. And then this here, sometimes we use Greek letters. So that there is beta. It's the Greek letter B. Same thing. Yeah. And then the last thing I'm going to get to do today, because I know you have a lot of notes to take down on this, are the different types of angles. So you know most of these. A null angle is an angle that's zero. Acute is less than 90. A right angle is a 90 degree angle. Obtuse is when you go bigger than 90, but not bigger than 180. 
a straight angle, so a straight line. Actually, I'm going to write that there. So the angle in a straight line or on that straight line is 180 degrees. A reflex angle is when you go beyond the 180. Um, I always remember that because a reflex, you know, if you, if anybody, hopefully nobody has, but if you have a reflex break, uh, you can have a reflex break in your arm or your leg, and that's where your um, elbow or your knee joint bends backwards, you know, beyond the 180, because obviously you can fully straighten your arm, but it shouldn't go any further than that. So if you bend it beyond 180, it's referred to as a reflex break. Um, full angle is the whole way around the circle, so 360. Um, an ordinary angle is an angle that's more than zero and less than 180. So an ordinary angle is either acute, right, or obtuse. Yeah? So an ordinary angle, so an acute angle is an ordinary angle. A right angle is an ordinary angle, and an obtuse angle is an ordinary angle. And then the last one is supplementary angles, and that's any two angles that measure 180, but I think the bit below is really good to note. Uh, they do not need to be beside each other, okay? Any two angles that add up to 180 are referred to as being supplementary, okay? Right, I'm going to leave it at that because the homework just took forever to go through, so I'm just going to leave it at that. Um, I want you to just take down the notes on the beginning of that chapter and um, that's like one whole, what I've done there is one whole ordinary level chapter, okay? So there's a lot in it, please keep the notes short. They do not need to be the same as what's in the book, you need to shorten them down. All you need to do is remember them. So if a question asked you find the line segment, you know what a line segment is. If the question asked you find a ray, you know what a ray is. Okay, so take down those notes um, for Monday and we will continue this chapter. Okay, thanks guys. Um, talk to you Monday.